Namaste friends, welcome to Bano Biology Center for True Learning. Here I request you to subscribe our YouTube channel Bano Biology Center for more videos, updates and notifications. In previous videos, we talked about the gametogenesis in that particularly spermatogenesis. How the human male gametes or sperms are formed. In this video, we try to understand the structure of human male gametes or sperms or spermatozoa. Here, human sperms are reproductive cells. They participate in production of the new offsprings. Sperms are observed by Antony van Leeuwenhoek for the first time under the microscope. Sperms are microscopic st structure. I mean, we can, we can observe the structure of sperms under the microscope only. The sperms are motile cells. They are movable. Sperm is an haploid cell. It is in a haploid condition because it contains only one set of chromosomes. Here half of the chromosomes only enters the sperms so because of the meiotic type of divisions. This haploid cell joins with another haploid cell formed in the human female that is ovum to form the zygote. Zygote is a diploid cell which contains two sets of chromosomes enters from male gamete and female gamete. Later on, zygote uh, develops into an embryo and by that uh, developed into the complete organism. The sperms determines the sex of the offsprings in humans. There are two types of sperms produced. Sperms containing Y chromosomes and sperms containing X chromosomes. If sperms containing X chromosomes fuse with the ovum, the offspring will be female. If Y containing sperms fuse with the ovum, the offspring will be male. Here, the complete determination of the sex of the offsprings in human beings depends on the which type of sperm is going to fuse with the ovum. Here, sperms contributes half of the nuclear genetic material to the diploid offspring. If we observe the genetic makeup of the offsprings, half of the genetic material came from the sperms and remaining half of the genetic material came from the ovum. Sperms remains alive and retain their ability to fertilize an egg from 24 to 48 hours after its entry into the female genital tract. When ejaculation happens in the female genital tract, the sperms can be alive from 24 to 48 hours. If the sperms meet the ovum within that period, the fertilization will take place and zygote is a type. Typical human sperm is made of four parts. Here the structure of the sperm is divided into four parts. One is head part, second neck part, third middle piece part or body part, fourth tail part. So here the structure of the sperm picture is given. So let us look at the labelings of the sperm structure. The outermost layer is called plasma membrane. This cap-like structure is acrosome. This is the nucleus containing chromosomal material. Nucleus is uh, present uh, posterior to the head part. This much of region or part represents the head part. Below the head part, the small region is found neck that is neck part. Below the neck part, the lengthy portion or lengthy part is called middle piece. Middle piece contains mitochondria, spiral mitochondria. Below the middle piece, from here to here, this slender region is called tail part. So let us talk about uh, each part. Sperm. Actually, the anterior part of the sperm is called a head part. Then, anterior part of the head contains acrosome. Here, acrosome is the coupler structure. Here, acrosome formed from the Golgi body of the spermatid. The Golgi body converts into the acrosome. What acrosome contains? Acrosome contains a some important enzymes like uh, hyaluronidase and proteolytic enzymes. 
they are called as sperm lysis. These enzymes are called sperm lysis. Why? Why? Because they break up the outermost layers of the ovum at the time of the fertilization. Here, hyaluronidase and proteolytic enzymes are capable of uh, rupture the outermost layers like zona pellucida and cumulus oophorus of the ovum. Because of this lysine, the nucleic material from the nucleus of the sperm easily enters the ovum and fuses with the genetic material of the nucleus of the ovum and uh, helps in formation of the zygote. The acrosome helps in penetrate the egg or ovum at the time of fusion. Then nucleus is present posteriorly in the head region. Next part the neck part. Neck is short. It is present between the head part and the middle piece. Neck region contains two types of centrioles. One is proximal centriole, another one is distal centriole. Proximal, proximal means nearby, distal means far away. Proximal centriole is present towards the nucleus. Here is the nucleus. Near to the nucleus, so there is one centriole is present, which is called proximal centriole. The another centriole is a distal centriole. It is present towards the middle piece. It is uh, away from the nucleus. Later on, proximal centriole forms spindle fibers during first cleavage of the zygote. After formation of the zygote, it undergoes uh, mitotic divisions to form many more cells. Uh, at the first cleavage, uh, proximal centriole forms uh, spindle fibers. The spindle fibers are essential for pulling the chromosomes towards the poles. Then, distal centriole forms axial filament or axonym. Axonym actually gives support or strength to the sperms. The arrangement of axial filaments uh, in 9 plus 2 fibrils. So it is about the The third part of the sperm is middle piece or body. This much of portion is called a middle piece or body. This middle piece contains spiral or coil shaped mitochondria which is called a leaven cone. It arounds the axial filament. This leaven cone or mitochondria supplies energy to the sperms for their motion for movement purpose it supplies the energy these mitochondria treated are regarded as powerhouses of sperm because they supplies the energy to the sperms one more important point a ring centriole which is also called annulus is appearing at the end of the middle piece here at this place we can observe the a ring centriole or annulus Still, we don't know the actual functioning of the annulus. What it forms, we don't know that. Then, the posterior half of the nucleus means uh, from here to here. This much of portion can be seen as posterior half of the nucleus, then neck and middle piece from here to here is covered by a sheath or one more layer which is called manchete. Manchete is the sheath which covers the half of the nucleus, neck part and middle piece part. The last part of the sperm is tail part. Tail is longer than the head. This slender part is tail region. Some portion of the tail has cytoplasm. Then the last portion of the tail uh, contains the cytoplasm almost snail. Here, tail pores is vibratile part of the sperm. It helps in movement to give the motion ability to the sperm. So, it creates vibration and uh, move. Thank you for watching this video.